Yeah, for those of you who are uh, paying attention to the news and I guess <coughs> you would have heard of some two survivors of the Blackwall Street massacre which happened in the US uh, who were um, um, privileged to visit Ghana well we were also privileged to have them here um, one thing that was remarkable was their age the fact that they had survived and were still alive um, as at now one was a hundred years old and the other was a hundred and seven um, so for those of you who saw them you would have seen them um, um, the two of them were um, sitting in um, uh, this types of uh, uh, chairs that um, look like stretchers they look like wheelchairs um, yeah because of how frail they were the woman especially uh, these are surviving elders of the USA's Black Wall Street massacre. It happened in 1921. Um, they, they visited the nation and uh, we were glad to have them. Um, they have been inspirational to a lot of people um, to let them know that um, it's not yet the end of the world um, when you go through some, some tragedy. Um, you know, uh, a lot of people go through painful stuff in life and... Um, Sometimes um, people uh, put an end to their dreams because of the, 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 the stones and the roadblocks that they face on their path to um, success. So um, these two people were very inspirational, not only to Ghana, but um, to the whole world who, um, who watched them, uh, who saw um, their story. Now, um, the, this um, Black Wall Street, from what we heard, it came about on a violent mob of some um, white people um, from America city of um, Tulsa, uh, Oklahoma. Uh, they went about wrecking homes and, um, and businesses and also people's properties, um, destroying the lives of some black community um, in Greenwood, also referred to as the Black Wall Street. Um, it was a very painful ordeal for many black people. Um, it was very 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 painful because um at that time most of them were still struggling you know coming out of this um, um slave um, life and the rest and trying to make it on their own it wasn't easy for them so um, uh, to go through that uh, at those times racism and the rest was very um racism and, and, and discrimination you know all this type of um um, feelings people have you know it was very strong back then you people you think are seeing um, um, discrimination today you, you should have been um, earlier in the 80s and even in um, the 60s and even 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 in the 90s the early 90s uh, it was a little hot back then uh, most of you in the 2000s you don't know what racism is you just hear people going about verbal abuse and stuff like that. but then it was serious back then it was very serious back then. Now, these two surviving elders of um, this um, incident, um, one by name Mrs. Viola Fletcher, she is 107 years old, and her brother is Mr. Hughes Van Ellis, who is also 100 years old. They've had um, this, you know, desire to set foot on African soil. You know, they've been wanting to come back to their roots. Um, you know, ever since you know they survived that. Um, um, that e event um, so when they came in August they were they were warmly welcomed Miss um, Fletcher is also popularly known as Mother Fletcher uh, and Mr. Hughes is also known as Mr. Red <laughs> um, when you look at them you see they are black but they are um, fair skinned um, you know, but you, when you see them you know that obviously these are black people uh, but if you can guess this is so because of their terrain, the places they've lived in and the like. Um, so, uh, Mr. Red and Mother Fletcher uh, were welcomed um, one Saturday in August. Now, Mother Fletcher uh, expressed some of um, her views concerning Africa and um, how um, she felt we could even do better as a continent. Um, and a lot of people took um, a lot of notes from them. Yeah, yeah, so they were received by the head of mission for the diaspora um, African Forum Embassy in Ghana. Also, the ambassador, Dr. Ewekad Bennett, 
um, had them um, receive them at the Kodoka International Airport, um, which is in Accra. So Miss Fletcher and her brother, um, Mr. Red, were assisted with a wheelchair. Um, they were welcomed um, later in the day. It's amazing how they've, they've lived for this long and yet some people are dying at 50, 40, 30 uh, and numbers that are just two digits. But look at these people who have been um, in um, this situation for that long and yet have still managed to um, have life in them. It shows us how powerful um, God can be. Uh, so for those of you who are going through um, a little crisis, the economy is not favoring you, or maybe something has been destroyed, your property has been taken away, or just something unfavorable has come your way, don't, don't be disheartened. Know that there's hope. There's still hope. As long as you have life, it's not over yet. It's not over yet. It's not um, always that things are going to go the way you expect them to be, but definitely there's still hope for you as long as you're... You, you look up and you uh, you have um, the inner feeling that things could be better yeah it's, it's never um, too late so um, yeah that's it we are we are so glad that they've made it to a hundred and a hundred and seven and are still living um, they are still living we get it um, th that's amazing so there was a, a, a ceremony held for them at the La Palm Royal Beach Resort which is in Accra uh, it was characterized by some drumming and some, you know, African culture, you know, how Ghanaians we can do our displays. Yeah, it was done for them. Also, um, the Archbishop um, um, of the Action Chapel, um, Duncan Williams, also had them, hosted them and then also was glad to have them with him. Um, he made his members to see that... Um, it's not yet over as long as god is um, um on your side you can live for as long as possible and no matter the uh, trouble you face it's it doesn't mean um it's the end for you so he was also happy to have them he took pictures with them the archbishop had a nice time with them you know asking for blessings and also blessing them it was such a nice um um, 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 thing to um, see. Um, there are some also other dignitaries who were welcomed by the guests. Um, there were some government um, functionaries and also some people from Accra as well to visit them. Even um, we had the president and the like also had them um, hosted them and also spoke with them. You know, um, had time with them and um, all these um, beautiful memories. So these are our people. Oh. These are people who are. Uh, from Africa so um, for those of you who don't know these are your own brothers and sisters these are your own people who um, due to the slave trade and all of these reasons um, that happened in, in the past they were moved to the US you get it so this historic journey um, um, you know of these people should not be taken lightly it's it's our own people who have come back to us um, they came to visit and we do hope that they will come again and not only them, other, um, you know, black Americans um, who who have seen the light and touching the roots um, of Africa. Um, it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, so the, the, there's a lot of truth in the black history that we have to get into and understand. And also connect it to our Lord God. Because um, th this, there's a lot of black um, truth that has been hidden for many and people um, don't see how resourceful we are and how blessed we are um, to be blacks um, so yeah the people of africa need to um, sometimes get these experiences to see that the lord god is true to his word um, there's a time where we have to put away politics and all these news news uh, about how things are going in the economy and all of that and all pandemics and all of these things that are being um, brought into the world and we should focus on how God has preserved us and has kept us even up to now. We are still, you know, alive and kicking and there's still hope for us. So um, that's about it. Uh, we we wish Miss Fletcher and uh, Mr. Ellis more life, you know, uh, for all those years of bad memories that um, they went through. We hope that they will receive many more years of good goodness, mercies, love and adoration yeah we were excited to have them in this nation and i mean think about it 
it's Ghana they came to it's Ghana it's right here so yeah, you should know I mean among the African countries they plan on stepping on Ghana was one of the uh, ones they came to if you're a Ghanaian you should be proud yeah, some of you might feel like you don't see what um, this is because people of people of late especially the young ones coming up they don't see the significance of um, um, such people of these um, stories because they, they you know the 2000 bonds they they have no experience of some things in the past so you cannot really blame them but yeah there's a very um, great importance in having such people you get it um you you not know until sometimes um um uh, you have a taste of the 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 experiences that they went through that's when you you know um um what it means to have them here so uh, Miss Fletcher was um, expressing how this was a dream come true to her for reaching Ghana. Uh, so she appreciated the chief executive officer of the Black Truth, um, who's Mr. Michael Thompson. Um, he also appreciated some officials like Dr. Bennett and their outfits for you know ar- arranging this beautiful trip to the nation. Also, she thanked all those who were uh, present to wish her well and, and the like. Um, she said that they are thrilled to be going on a journey f- of a lifetime and they are excited about their coming home to Africa. It means a lot to them. Yeah, for sometimes, you know, for those of you who travel out there, you just feel this presence of you being lost. When you realize that there are some elements in the uh, foreign countries that you visit that keep you away from your truth, your roots, and all the uh, goodness God has blessed you with. So when you are there for a long time, you just feel this lost presence but when you come to africa that's when you feel like you are touching base then you feel this um, gladness of heart and this um, peace coming back to you it happens there are a lot of people who are here right now who want to go um, to the u.s and to other um, um, foreign countries but when they go there and they spend some time there then they see the difference you see that it's not really as much as they thought it would be for them you see it's not everything that's about money and riches and the like you you can you can get all those things but you'll not really be satisfied um at the end of the day so you you sometimes have to um look at the the blessings and the disadvantages that are around you and not always focus on um, um the the painful parts of them and get it um so uh, miss fletcher was grateful to be welcomed to the amazing land of gold she calls us the amazing land of gold and that's a good thing to know um for those of you who are still in the u.s and um are wanting to come to africa please do uh would would allow you to come will not keep you from coming just don't um go there um, live there and die there and then have your dead bodies brought back to africa it's not it's not fine when when we see and hear those stories we are always wondering like what is that supposed to mean why would you go and live there to to make ends meet for greener pastures and then after working all and making all that money, you don't really get to enjoy it. You die over there, and then you come to be buried over here. Is this is this place a, a, a burial ground? Africa cannot be a place where we we'll be burying you. No, when you live there, try your best to come before you die. Try your best to come and touch base, meet people, um, form relations with people, connect with your old people your family, those who you've had bad relations with, try to mend them. It doesn't matter if it's your fault or if it's their fault. Just come on, man. You are Africans. So if you are there and then you are listening to this message, hey, you you don't have to um, be one of those survivors before you come back to, um, you know, the motherland or to Africa. Maybe you're a Nigerian. There's a lot of Nigerians who are out there these days um, trying to hustle and make a lot of um, income. Please remember to touch home. Don't wait till you die there before somebody will bring your, your dead body over over to Africa for, for you to be buried. I mean, uh, you cannot um, uh, make us feel like this is a dead place where only, only you know dead things happen, where, where dead bodies are brought. So um, that's it for those of you who are in foreign countries. But as you are there, do your best to, you know, behave well and make all the income and the wealth you want to make. But always remember that um, there's a God and also there's a, a place he made you to for. He made you for Africa. He didn't make you for those foreign countries. Yeah, so that's it. Um, let's see your views and your comments in the section below about what you think about these two survivors. 
uh, about the Black Wall Street massacre and even about them coming to Ghana. Let's see what you think about it. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.